Hi everybody, I'm your host Kushan, and welcome to more Command Modern Air Naval Operations. There we go. Much better without the sound there. And today, I am going to be showing off the Command Northern Inferno expansion, which is due out in the very near future. Sorry about that, just checking uh, on the chat room. It looks like the sound is okay. Please let me know if there is any issues with the stream. And so get started. So, as you can see here, the new option on the main menu is for the campaign, which brings you, which right now, only one currently available is Northern Inferno. But I'm not going to be showing off that right now. Um, my plan for today is not to spoil the entire campaign, but to pick one of the 15 scenarios and play it. And I've decided on Fire and Brimstone, which is the 11th scenario in the campaign. All right. So... Orders for Commander NATO Forces. Now, a little bit of a background for this scenario is that the Soviets, now this uh, campaign is set in, I believe, 1975. Um, so the Soviets launched a nuclear attack on the United Kingdom uh, airfields in Scotland from Kola. The United Kingdom retaliated with the Ark Royal Battle Group, which was then sunk. And then now the Saratoga and the JFK battle groups are now tasked with supporting NATO forces in Norway. So as we can see, 15th Brigade remains, hold the line. Soviet naval and air units are also on high alert to stop the transit of both CVBGs to the area of operations. So I can probably expect uh, Soviet bombers now, it has been a while since I have played this scenario. Um, so, enemy forces, lots of badgers, some bears, and a, at least one regiment of backfires, bee bombers. Um, badger Cs, floggers, which are attack aircraft, and MiG-21 fishbed J fighters. Um, I can also expect SSNs, SSGNs, and SSKs, which are diesel submarines. Um, so SAM systems are in the area. Friendly forces, the Sar USS Saratoga Battle Group, the USS JFK Battle Group. As you can see, these battle groups are much bigger than the uh, the modern uh, carrier strike groups. I have RAF Mildenhall, which is way down in the United Kingdom with rivet joints and RB-57s, which I'm not actually sure what that is. Um, I got Harriers, Jaguars. So my mission, conduct strikes against Bordofus and Bonnach airfields, which are in, I believe, northern Norway. Once located and engaged, the 37th Motorized Division and supporting units. So I will be conducting some ground attacks. Locate and destroy the Red Banner fleet units in your area. So I'll be also be conducting some naval strikes. And detect and neutralize Soviet submarines. So, execution, Saratoga and JFK carrier battle groups are to take up station as per patrol boxes. Nuclear release authorization on ASW and air-to-air -air weapons is not, not on strike weapons. Nuclear release, release authorized on ASW and air-to-air -air weapons, not on strike weapons. So I can't actually launch any nuclear attacks of my own. Conduct operations as per my mission briefing. Use recon and ELINT assets at Milton Hall to locate Soviet forces. And I'm limited to um, alpha limited emissions for my MCON. All right, so we've already got my carrier battle groups. So there's my two patrol boxes. We're just going to let those continue on their courses. Let's take a look at what I have available. So I've got some A7B Corsairs on the JFK. I've got some Hawkeyes. I've got two squadrons of F14A Tomcats. 
some a squadron of S3A Vikings, one C2 Greyhound, an RA5C Vigilante. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. And it's a recon aircraft. Some EA6Bs. And then I have some intruders, some KA6 intruders for refueling. And then I have some A6 intruders for strikes. And then some C sprites for ASW work. It doesn't look like currently any of these are currently armed with any nuclear weapons. may want to change that at some point, but I'm going to use the sea sprites here eventually for kind of close in ASW work. So I'm not going to be wanting to drop a uh, nuclear death charges that close to my carriers. All right. And then let's take a quick look at the, I believe this is the Saratoga group. So we've got some F4s over here, A6s, A7s. So no F14s with this group. I've got some RF-8s, which are recon variants of the Crusaders. And more Sea Sprites, 1C2. More Vikings. And more Intruders. So pretty much the same group, just no, uh, just F4s instead of F14s. All right, so let's get started here, and then let's see what else I have out here at sea. So I've got, already have a rivet joint airborne, and I already have an RB-57 Canberra. That is one ugly looking airplane. And so closer over here, so these are my two bases I have to conduct land strikes against. Bartofus Air Base here and the Bonnock Diversionary Air Base up here and off the North Cape. I don't have, I've got some, there are some land units in here, but it doesn't look like I actually have any, oh, I do have an airfield in here with some GR1 Harriers, mainly configured in the strike and recon roles. A little farther south, I have, I believe that's Bodo, and here I've got are where my Jaguars are stationed, again, mainly s configured in the strike roll. And that looks like it's it. And then, of course, I have Mildenhall way down here, which is where my rivet joints are actually flying out of. All right, so first thing here, we're going to set up uh, some missions here. Not sure what that point out there is for. That point probably um, precedes the, uh, oh, it's there to mark the island. It's probably there before we got uh, map labels. And then up here. All right, so there's Bear Island. So we're going to let the carriers kind of continue on their way. We are going to define an area around carrier group three. We want these to be rotating around the carrier group. So they, now they will move along with it. And we are going to set up my Hawkeyes. Actually, I'm going to change this just a little bit. I'm going to keep those two points. And I'm actually going to delete those ones. And I'm going to set up two missions, I think. I just have to find my Hawkeyes. So we are looking... Oh, are none of my Hawkeyes in this group ready to fly at the moment? All right, so we want, this is the, all 
Give me just a second here. Why is this not? Oh, I'm just fumbling around here. So the JFK, the mission editor, and new mission, AEW. Call this the JFK. I want separate uh, support missions for both of these carrier groups. All right, there we go. I want to. BA 125 gets assigned to there. So we have four Hawkeyes. And. There we go. So it'll patrol between these two points. And actually. I want to add one more point over here and make it rotating around here. And at that, and the reason for the third point is that put, is that support missions only go one direction. So in this case, it'll start down here at point 8343. It'll then travel as noted by this little arrow right here to 8344, in which case it'll then, if there wasn't the third point, it would just basically turn off its radar and fly back to point one. In this case, it's actually going to keep its radar on, fly back to this 8346 point, and then it'll loop back around and continue on its way. All right, so we got that mission. Let's select those and we want to set up normally I actually set up my normally what I do for my uh, AEW missions is I just set them up as a single point and I'm wondering if I should do that now hmm um, yeah, we'll let it move around. And then we'll do the same thing over here with the Saratoga group. Have a point there. Have a point over here. So it looks like the, uh, the range of the air weapons on the Saratoga group looks like it's slightly larger. Um, so we'll make these points rotating around carrier, create new mission, support, W, Saratoga, all right, and I only have three Hawkeyes on the Saratoga that are available. So I'm actually going to have to really watch my uh, my expenditure of these units, and I'm actually going to pull this air-to-air -air these a little closer in. And just make sure that the Saratoga. All right, so check doctrine, MCON settings, radar is active. Don't want sonar. So the JFK group or mission, radar is active, no passive, or no sonar, I'm sorry. It's on one third rule. Keep one aircraft up at a time. Um, no preference. Continuous loop. All right. So that should set up my that mission. And then I'm wondering if 
it probably for the time being. I'm going to set up another box. I'm wondering how I want to do my my ASW mission. So we're going to do this here. Set up a, a slightly larger box around. Again, we're going to make it rotating around the battle group. End new mission. Patrol, ASW, all right, so let's find my, we're going to just for the moment, just set this up, so we got the JFK, JFK, That's on the Saratoga. Not sure what mission those are on or what uh, groups those are in. So we'll just leave them. Truett, Wainwright, we'll have to come back to those. Oh, and it looks like uh, some of my Sea Kings on the Saratoga are actually armed with. 20 kiloton nuclear depth charges. All right, so that's the JFK group. All right, so we can deselect those. Define area again. And we'll do the same thing for the Saratoga battle group. And Sea Kings. And then I'm gonna set up another mission. A new mission. So this is going to be an ASW strike mission that's going that I'm going to assign all of the rest of my helicopters to. The Sea Kings, none of those are available. And I think that's it. Okay. So mission triggers on unknown. The maximum strike distance for this is I'm going to set this at 50 nautical miles. So it's a single aircraft will trigger. Expand ordnance. What air to refueling? That all looks good. So what this mission will do is that if a sub is detected within 50 nautical miles of the battle group, then one of these will trigger off and launch. That takes care of those. And then I'm going to actually set up my Vikings to start clearing out these boxes. All right, so let's find my I believe that's all of the Vikings, the rest of these. Oh, and the Vikings on the Saratoga, of course, are armed with a 20 kiloton nuclear bombs. Doesn't look like anything on the JFK is, though. That's interesting. Um, I believe Xcrode is saying that all the helicopters will take off. 
that's probably correct. So I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to reduce it, but it only triggers off if something isn't within 50 nautical miles of the launching unit, which is a good point. Um, give me just a moment here. I'll actually go and fix that. Add new mission. So this should be the last mission I have to set up, and then I can actually start uh, playing here. Add those to that mission. So one through one third. Don't investigate. Con um, yes, investigate contacts outside your patrol area, but I'm going to limit that. All right, so both of those are set. One third rule. So as part of this, I'm going to define another area over here. Mission editor for the prosecution zone, which the prosecution zone, for anybody that doesn't know, is that when you have a mission set to investigate contacts outside the patrol box, if you don't have a prosecution set, they will roam wherever they feel like looking for. If you if you had a patrol box over here, any sub is detected over here, and that is checked, then your aircraft will go and investigate a contact over here. If you have a patrol box assigned, and like in this case, if a contact is detected over here, then it'll leave its box, but it won't go outside of this outer green box. And I'm going to define another area for the Saratoga group. So that should give me pretty good ASW coverage here. And as far as the Hewa strikes, what I'm going to do so I'm going to reduce this down to, say, 15 nautical miles. So this will be basically my last ditch kind of ASW. Something really gets in close to the in, to one of the carrier groups, in which case I'd probably launch off all my uh, helos anyway. All right, so let's get things started here. All right, so we've already got a skunk detected which is a surface contact. All right, there goes my air units. Just want to verify that radar is on. All right, so we have a merchant ship. Very strange. And let's just check the speed of these groups. They are going at 20 knots. All right. So those groups are traveling. We're going to just use the rivet joint here, see if we can lock on. We do you have an air contact? So we've already detected a bear. All right. And it's a maritime reconnaissance version of the bear. So I don't want that getting any closer to my carriers than I can get. So I'm, I'm going to launch. Not gonna. I'm gonna keep my F-14s in case I encounter backfires. And 
And I'm going to launch just a flight of phantoms. We've got another bear, it looks like. Yep, a bear D. So let's get another group of phantoms airborne. We don't have that many ready fighters, so watch this group. So there's the first two. We're going to send them in that direction. And we've picked up another contact. Looks like a... Uh-oh. We've already got MiGs airborne. MiG-21 SMs. So we've got some fish beds airborne. Get this group of phantoms going for the other bear. Right, please let me know uh, what the stream quality is like, if any of this looks a little choppy. I know, th I believe that this uh, scenario has got quite a few units in it. Uh-oh, we need to get this guy turned away because they're going right for my rivet joint. So I'm probably going to lose this unit. All right, so a bit choppy. Now, Part of, I should let everybody know that this is a beta version, so there may be some bugs. Um, and the reason that this is probably so choppy is frankly because I'm, it's probably a large scenario. I don't know what the unit count is offhand, but bigger scenarios tend to slow down significantly while I'm streaming. So yeah, 844 units, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm not quite sure why, why it's so uh, choppy. But uh, we'll take a look at it. If it gets too bad, please let me know and uh, I can try and restart the stream. So... Alright, so this group, well, my first group of Phantom is just about in range of the bear. Really don't want them getting a uh too close to the carrier groups to spot for those backfires. All right, and it's already launched a missile. Ah, awesome. To all units. From Red Crown, TU-95, RT Bear D, Snooper, Splashed, BT. Awesome. So let's set this group back. Dump cover the group. All right, thanks, Java. 
Thanks, Xcrote. Please, uh, like I said, just let me let me know if this if it gets a uh, too choppy, and I'll uh, see what I can do. I've turned off a uh, hi-fi mode, which is high fidelity mode. All right, so I have lost those fish beds. So actually, my RC-135 is actually going to survive. I thought a missile would be able to be uh, splashed by now, so that's always a good thing. And that merchant is turned towards the JFK group. Oh, that's interesting. That's not a merchant at all. They look at it. Possible matches. BBK Kanan, which is a Soviet destroyer, a Cresta 2 class cruiser, or a Cresta 1 class cruiser. So that's not a merchant at all. That's a spy ship. And it's really, really close to my battle group. We'll see if the uh... that's not good at all. Um, what do I have to strike? It's really, really close. So And we'll just let it keep coming in. All right, so we do have those fish beds back on. Uh... Back in contact. And two of them look like they're actually... Nope, doesn't look like they're pursuing the RC-135. But we do have an incoming rate of some sort. All right, so the second group of fandoms has launched against the other bear. Uh oh, and I have another raid incoming. First one missed. That is one lucky bear. It's dodged two missiles now. New contact, Sam. Uh-oh, jumped to location. Where is that Sam at? All right, so my... All right, that's way outside of my area. I don't care about over there right now. I care about how that bear has managed to dodge like three missiles. Vampire detected. Detected by AA. No contrail. All right, so it looks like there's an attack of some sort maybe under the underway over here. But I'm really not too concerned with it, but it looks like I do have a raid of some sort coming in. Those look like... Flag SU-15MFs, Flag and Ds. I've never heard of these ones before. They are a fixed-wing fighter. And their only loadout is a fighter loadout. What are these? More make SU-15s, more SU-15s. Do we know what these ones are? No. So these may be just cap coming up. This is probably those... All right, so it doesn't look like my subs have found any, or my POs have found a sub yet. Zulu 4 SSK attacked and assessed as Cat 4 sunk. Oh, I guess they did. Uh, I guess my, uh, I'm sorry. You were right, Xcrote. My subs were after something. I just wasn't paying attention.
All right, so where are my phantoms at? So we're going to send this group of phantoms south. This group of phantoms is going to come in this direction, trying to intercept, and I think I got to launch more. So again, I'm going to hold my F5 or F14s in reserve for as long as I can. So I'll launch the Tom, two more Tomcatters, and get the first couple of Jolly Rogers airborne. In fact, we'll launch all the Jolly Rogers that are available. And I still got two hours and 20 minutes on the readiness for all of my other fighters. So hopefully this first strike can, uh, new vampire detected, sand platoon rapier, no contra. Okay, close and resume. All right, so there may be some sort of patrol line or something, because those, Fighters look like they're kind of breaking off into patrol groups, so there may they may not be actually coming after me directly. But my Vikings are gonna be in trouble. In fact, they're probably heading for the Vikings. Probably was a mistake to send those Vikings out that far this soon. All right, so Phantoms. There we go. Just had to fix my window settings real quick. All right, so 